The United States went to war against Great Britain. The British were already waging a global war against France, once which had been raging since 1793. This war started for many little reasons that added together. Since their war had broken out, Britain and France had both tried to restrict international trade. The United States was put in an awkward position, unable to trade with either world power, without pissing off another. In response, Congress passed a series of non-importation acts and embargoes, basically saying, Hey, Europeans, it's gonna hurt when you can't trade with us, better knock it off. Europe literally did not give one damn and said, yeah, okay, chief, you hold all that thought. During this time, the British were also doing several other things that were considered insulting. They really had it out for us. From 1783 to 1812, the British Parliament issued 12 Order of Councils which, de which declared that any merchant ship bound to a French port was subject to search and seizure. Thomas Jefferson was like, hey, cool, I have an idea, let's close our ports to international trade. Oh my god, why would you do that? Now we're in an economic depression. When James Madison was elected to presidency in 1808, he instructed Congress to prepare for war with Britain, and nobody else wanted it. This war was called Madison's War because everyone just gave the finger to Jemmy and told him to take his five foot two self somewhere else. On June 18th, 1912, they were formally declared war for the first time in national history. The British at this point had already repealed their restrictions on trade, and by the time the message reached them, they were like, oh, cool, let's wait to see how they react. And here's America doing its usual crackheadery, and even after receiving the repeal, they stand strong on their declaration of war. The poorly trained U.S. Army, numbering roughly 6,700 men, now face an experienced adversary, fielding over 240,000 soldiers spread across the entire globe. America's mil military fleet was large, but Britain's was much larger. The United States entered a war seeking to secure commercial rights to uphold national honor, which to me means we're going to flex that we're better than you. The American strategy was to quickly bring Great Britain to the negotiating table on these issues by invading Canada. While America was busy invading Canada, British allied Native Americans continued to raid in Indiana and Illinois, massacring many American settlers. These Native Americans were, of course, armed by British soldiers. Blah 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 war stuff on the mid-Atlantic coast, British troops landed in Chesapeake Bay area in 1814 and marched towards Washington. U.S. General William Winder made an attempt to stop the British forces, commanded by General Robert Ross. The U.S. troops were badly routed, the city of Washington was evacuated, and the British burned the Capitol and the White House. Dolly Madison, James Madison's wife, was not having it that day. She was told to evacuate the White House since word spread quickly that the British planned to invade D.C. Dolly said, No. Whoever was man enough to stay, including a few guards, the slaves and servants of the White House, gathered anything they can salvage, put them into boxes and suitcase, and dipped. Dolly saved important documents, china, curtains, and a portrait of George Washington. If you can't already tell, I, I loved I loved Dolly Madison. British troops were relentless. They proceeded through the United States all the way down to Mississippi. By the end of 1814, the war was turning out to be a tougher fight than either side expected. Britain, caught up in the costly Napoleon Wars, began to look for a way to extricate itself from the American commitment. In the Belgium city of Ghent, American negotiators, including John Quincy Adams and Henry Clay, met with British diplomats. After a while, the negotiators decided they will sign the treaty on December 24, 1814, officially ending the war. The treaty returned the U.S.-Britain relation to the same status as they had before the war. The U.S. neither gained nor lost any territory. Impressment went unaddressed. At the end of the war, a group of Federalist merchants decided to get together at the Hartford Convention and discuss what to do, because they were seriously hurt during this war. Turns out that this uh, convention made them look like silly little dummies and uh, that spelled the end of the Federalist Party because they didn't know that there was already a treaty. They didn't realize that this was all over and that everything was back to normal. I mean, Federalists were kind of known to make fools of themselves, but like, that's, that's just...